How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 7 in my introduction to Python series. These next tutorials, uh, two tutorials, we're going to be covering a concept that might be new to you um, and that is classes. I've divided this up into two parts. This video I'm just going to be talking about what classes are. In the next video we're going to talk about how to program them in Python. I'm splitting them up because classes are what I had the hardest with in all my computer science classes. I didn't really understand it until maybe halfway through my first semester of a uh, university and it really, you know, it got edged in my brain once I learned Java second semester of my first year. So, very important um Python's not really an object oriented programming language. Um but classes are still useful in Python. So let's just go over a couple things. I just created this random text document. I'll upload it to my website or something, uh, codingbasics.ca hopefully if I remember. So I'm just going to put some bullet points here for you guys to look over. But um, so the first thing, um, uh, what are classes? So classes are important when it comes uh, to object oriented programming. Now, you can always look up what object-oriented programming is on uh, Wikipedia, but just as an example, I guess, um, Java is an ob object-oriented programming language, so pretty much everything comes from the object class, and you end up with these hierarchies. So just for an example, um, a person. Uh, so you could have this person class. Well then, this person class, um, like you're kind of making a hierarchy. So the person class could be, uh, you know, created into or you know extended to a subclass. So you start out with this person. Your subclasses could be a more specific person. So it could be an author, would be your one of your more specific people. Um, next one could be a teacher. And then your next subclass could be a student. So, um, it, you know, object-oriented programming, you're creating a hierarchy. I'm not sure if I'm spelling hierarchy right. English is definitely not my major. So, just trying to give you a, a little bit of an image here. I hope that's not really confusing for anyone. So, anyway, you end up with, you have objects. You then also have, you know, subclasses. So you have subclasses that are more specific than the uh, this class. So this class is known as the superclass to these subclasses. This is a more general object. The subclasses are more specific or specific objects. Now you might be confused when I'm saying objects and classes. A class is a template for an object. So, you know, a class is just something you program. When you make an instance of that class, you have an object. So, uh, you know, we have our person class. Every time we create a new person, you know, we have a new object. And, you know, what are classes really all about? They uh, contain um, instance variables which I will explain more in a minute and they also contain instance methods instance variables are uh, um, they're variables that are part of that uh, class and they're specific to that particular object instance methods are uh, methods that are part of the class um, let me just explain this a little bit better so let's just say here as an example uh, we have our person class okay well now we have uh, I'm just gonna it's not coded like this but just to give you an example I'll separate them with headers so we have our person class as variables we could have age each person has a unique age so that's the instance variable each uh, person object is gonna have an age but it can be different so it's not the same variable for each person object. They could also have a name. 
you know, different name for each object. Um, and then you could have methods. So these instance methods could be, for example, you could have a method called get age, which all it does is, you know, return the age variable for this specific person object. So I uh, hope that kind of clears it up. Instance variables are just variables part of each class, unique to that class. Instance methods are uh, um, methods that uh, you know do something to the class, specifically to the variables of that class. Um, let me actually let me bring up the Wikipedia page on it. I did have it in case I had to reference it. Did not want to have to come to that, but I did. So I'm just going to bring it up into a new window. Um, so just to read the full first sentence, it's it's a little bit more of a watered down than what I've been trying to explain. In object oriented programming, class is an exten uh, extensible program code template for creating objects, providing initial values for state uh, member variables, which I've been calling instance variables. So, you know, you have your initial values for that object. And then implement implementations of behavior. So, member functions, which I've been calling instance uh, methods. So, um, I'm not going to read any more beyond that. That's all I'm going to read. Uh, and that's all I'm going to go on for into the, for that. So I'm just trying to get the concept across to you guys. Um, why do we create? Uh, um, why do we create classes? Well, to store groups of data together. We're not going to create, you know, we're not going to create age one for a certain person, then age two for the next person, and be able to keep track of it that way. No, we can have. Um, we can have a bunch of uh, objects of a single class, each of them with the same variable names, and that makes it easier to code too. So to say you're doing a for loop, looping through a bunch of uh, of you know our person objects, well, we could print out the age for each one because it would be the exact same variable that we're referencing, or you know method. So we could use the get age method on each of them. We don't have to, you know. I'm just trying to put it out there that it, it makes coding easier. I didn't get this. It was confusing. And unfortunately, it was, it was hard to get, but I'm finding it even harder to explain to everyone. I'm hoping you get it. If not, you know, read more into it. It is definitely worth it. It's a very important concept in computer science to understand. So you're grouping together uh, bits of data. And actually, I I'll bring up my uh, professor in uh, so I'm just going to search comp 1406 this was the course I took second semester first year in uh, my computer science program and if I can find it quickly this was the best professor I've ever had honestly look at his website the notes should hopefully be here when you're watching this um, Finding object behavior, maybe I'm just trying to remember which unit it was a part of. Uh, I don't think it was in this one. So kind of what you know right here, object equals state plus behavior. So each class has in it you know a state, which are the uh, instance variables, and then behavior, the instance methods. Uh, there was one analogy. This guy, one thing I loved about this professor, he was amazing with analogies. Does not look like it's in this one, though. Maybe it was. Well, maybe it was in this one. I'm hoping. Um, okay, so um, this is kind of what uh, I was looking for. An object represents multiple pieces of information that are grouped together. So if we just had a variable called age, that's known as a primitive. You just have, you know, one age variable. An object has a grouping of all these different variables. So, you know, just say a pencil represents of uh, a single type of data. An object has a bunch of different pencils, so a bunch of different types of data grouped together for use. So um, I'm not going to explain it too much because uh, this is in Java coding, but... 
he created this uh, address class which contains the name of the uh, person the street number so the house number the street name the city the province the postal code you're just grouping together a bunch of data well I'm hoping I didn't bore you guys too much in this video um that's all I got for you guys though please leave a comment on this video like this video and subscribe and I will see you next time when we actually start programming some classes